Hello and welcome to Legacy IS Academy. In this video, we are going to discuss the previous year questions related to Indian economy which appeared in the year 2018. So there were a total of uh, 13 questions which appeared in this year, out of which 8 were static related and 5 were related to current affairs. And out of these 5 as well, we see somewhere around 3 questions which could be easily solved using your static knowledge itself. So look at the first question, which one of the following links all the ATMs in India? So what links all the ATMs in India is a network called as NFS, the National Financial Switch. So this service is being provided by an organization called NPCI. Okay. So the National Payments Corporation of India, which is an umbrella organization. Uh, for operating all the retail payments and settlement systems in India. Okay, payment and settlement systems in India. So that is the one which is providing this service. So ultimately, who is responsible for linking all the ATMs in India? It is the NPCI. So you can directly remove this uh, National Securities Depository Limit, uh, Limited. So that is your uh, NSDL. And then you have Indian Banks Association. So that is a uh, you know group of banks coming together and they have formed an association. And then Reserve Bank of India, it is not related to running this you know ATM network. So option is C. Next is uh, which of the following statement correctly describes the meaning of legal tender money? So what is this legal tender money? Uh, legal tender money means all that money. <clears throat> which is presently being used for transaction purposes, right? Transaction of goods and services as a medium of exchange for goods and services, plus all the money, uh, you know, all the medium that you use for the settlement of debt, okay? Settlement of debt. So legally, it is acceptable and this is legally binding right it is binding it's a compulsion for someone to accept it as what as a compensation to the debt right so any medium that is legally binding for legally uh, you know uh, it is a compulsion for someone to accept it as a repayment of the debt somebody owes then it is considered legal tender so by that measure what is legally like this Today we have currencies of all the denomination which is in circulation. So all the currency which is in circulation, right? Circulation. So of all denominations, the coins and the notes you have. Then what about some other money which is out of circulation? Let's say some commemorative coins. Commemorative coins or for that matter demonetized money. Right, demonetized currency. What about this part? So, is this legal tender? No. Right. These do not serve this purpose. Legally, it is not binding. So, they cannot be accepted. At the same time, you also see that at the end of the day, they also are, you know, issued by an authority. They were also at some point issued by an authority. This also was issued by an authority or a government. So, the common name for both of them is fiat money, right? So, all that is issued by an authority or the government is fiat money, but which is acceptable for transactions and settlement of debt presently would be legal tender. So, by that measure, which one actually fits the meaning? A does not fit the meaning because tendered in courts of law to defray uh, the fee of legal cases, no. Second, the money which a creditor is under compulsion to accept in settlement of his claims. Yes, the bank, the bank money in the form of checks, drafts, you may always reject it. The metallic money in circulation in a country. So this can be true, but at the same time, it is a much broader definition B. So, you know, you may say B or D, but B is more broader a definition. So you can go with B. Next. If a commodity is provided free to the public, so it is provided for free to the public, let's say it is a subsidy given to the public. So, you know, who is on the losing side? 
as in who is losing an opportunity here so what is the opportunity cost opportunity cost is nothing but you know uh, benefits an individual or an investor or even a business um, misses out just because just because one alternative is chosen over the other right for example in this case government has the money right and it can spend in two forms it can spend on everyone or spend on a group of people select group right whenever the money is spent on this select group without collecting the fees fees is not collected then what is the cost of it what is the cost of it there is a cost that should be paid by someone who is that taxpayers right so the taxpayers are supposed to pay the cost so the opportunity cost is transferred from the consumers of these goods or the product to the government no it cannot be true why it cannot be true the government is not the ultimate you know opportunity cost payer here who is the ultimate person the taxpayers where do we have it here tax paying public that is c so opportunity cost is actually not ignored opportunity cost is not zero right so somebody is paying that cost who is that it is transferred to the tax paying public it is c here yeah. next increase in absolute and per capita real gnp do not connote see it's a negative question do not connote a higher level of economic development if so basically gdp or gnp gross national product is increasing per person that is per capita as well as as a whole as absolute in absolute terms as well it is increasing despite that we are saying there is no sign of economic development so economic growth is there but development is not happening when do we say economic development is not happening we say economic development is not happening when some basic necessities are not being met by some population right so basic necessities are not being met the standard of living is low right no opportunities are being provided to them right so they don't have enough opportunities under these conditions we say economic development is not happening right so can you say that these are pretty much visible when health is not available properly education is not available properly right food clothing shelter is not available properly which means are we suggesting that you know these people are the ones who are poor these are the people who are unemployed these are the people who are marginalized right people who are discriminated against correct now when we have these conditions we say economic development is not happening so let's see if we find a particular sentence which matches this description industrial output fails to keep pace with agriculture output no that does not fit this definition agriculture output fails to keep pace with industrial output not fitting the definition poverty and unemployment are increasing see imports grow faster than exports does not matter so the answer is c next human capital formation see human capital formation what does this even mean as a concept is better explained in terms of a process which enables which of the following so let's see what is human capital formation first so every country is endowed with some number of people that is the population right this population is a human resource right this human resource can become capital that is human capital when it is equipped with three things one is health the other one is education the other one is skills hes then it becomes human capital now when you have this human capital this human capital you know has these abilities that is it has good health 
good education and good level of skills now whatever human capital you have is it something which you can touch and feel no basically it is intangible right it is basically intangible on the other hand we have another type of capital as well we call it as you know gfcf gross fixed capital formation right so that is the fixed capital what about this this is about your money this is about capital can you touch these things machinery plant machinery and equipment basically so can you touch these things yes it is tangible very much tangible okay so let's come back to the question now human capital formation as a concept is better explained in terms of a process which enables individuals of a country to accumulate more capital what is this capital plant machinery equipment does it fit this definition no increasing the knowledge skill levels and capacities that is health capacities of the people health or abilities so two it does fit accumulation of tangible wealth tangible wealth then becomes gfcf so it does not fit the definition accumulation of intangible wealth look at this so the answer is two and four only the answer is c next despite being a high saving economy so your economy is saving better capital formation may not result in significant increase in the output due to so if you save high in your economy so do the savings come in the form of household saving the private saving the government saving right so if the saving is increasing it essentially means that the investment is also increasing that is gfcf is also increasing in your country right capital formation or investment is increasing despite this generally when investment increases the outcome should be that output also increases but the question says that the output output is falling how is this even possible is it possible because there is weak administrative machinery yes it is very much possible illiteracy is it because of that yes that is also very much possible high population density yeah maybe indirectly yes it can also be the cause but look at the final one high capital output ratio so for this what you have to do is you just write it this way capital to output ratio so if this is high what does it actually mean so capital to output let's say capital is 100 output is also 100 how much do you get as a value one if it is higher what does it mean if it is higher let's suppose it is 120 and this is 100 so now it becomes higher 1.2 if it is higher don't you think you are spending more capital to get the same amount of output which means the higher the capital output ratio less efficient is your economy so despite saving more despite investing more the output will be falling if your capital to output ratio is higher so the answer is d which is a direct answer it is like a mathematical calculation you had you have to do or so as to see you know you just have to substitute the values and see okay so it is more of a direct answer next so the reserve bank of india manages and services government of india securities but not any state government securities so is it true that is rbi does not you know deal with the government securities of the state government for that you have to know which are all the government securities that exist right so when we speak of the government securities you have the central government and you have the state government central government issues cash management bills t bills and what we know as the normal gzec or you can call them as dated securities okay whereas state governments release what we know as state development loans so 
in this scenario does the rbi deal with sdl or not that is a simple question so yes it does deal with the sdl as well right so it manages and services the state government loans as well our state government securities as well so the first statement is absolutely wrong right it is a banker to the state governments as well treasury bills are issued by government of india and there are no t bills issued by state government do we see t bills here no only sdls so two is right t bills are issued at a discount from a par value what is this basically this is discount at face value which means t bills are issued by the central government for a discount at face value and it is zero coupon bonds we call them as what zero coupon bonds basically they don't carry any interest rate on the face of it okay so on the face of it they don't have any interest rate what they do they sell it at a discount right and while you return back this particular bond at maturity they are going to pay you the face value itself whatever par value is that that will be paid to you so you bought it at a discount and got the face value which means whatever extra gain you make will be the equivalent of interest you can assume that to be the interest okay however on the bond on the table interest rate will not be mentioned that is why what is it called zero coupon bonds or interest free bonds right there is no interest for that clear so is 3 right yes absolutely right the answer is c okay next car capital adequacy ratio is the amount of money that the banks have to maintain in the form of their own funds to offset any loss that banks incur if the account holders fail to repay dues so car the other name for this is crer capital to risk weighted assets ratio this is something which has been prescribed by the bessel norms so according to the bessel 3 norms this is supposed to be maintained at 12.9% right so crar or car is supposed to be maintained at 12.9% so why this is to be maintained so to safeguard the depositors money right uh, at the same time it is also to safeguard the bank if if the account holders are not able to pay back the you know uh, loans they have taken so it is to protect the depositors at the same time to protect the bank from the people who have taken the loans right if they fail to repay the dues in such scenario so one is absolutely right so here you have in ca crer or car you have tier 1 capital and tier 2 capital divided by the risk weighted assets rwa tier 1 capital is equity capital tier 2 capital is debt capital right so this total ratio has to be 12.9% overall according to bessel 3 norms so any which ways so first one is right car is decided by each individual bank no as i told you it is according to the bessel norms at the same time bessel norms are decided by central banks of you know uh, leading countries so they meet at basel in switzerland right so the bank of international settlements that's where they meet so after meeting there they draw down some you know draw up some norms and they bring them back to the countries they originated from and they will be implemented by the central banks so the central banks are the ones which are responsible for deciding the car in their particular country so two is wrong so answer is a one only right next so this is related to current affairs which of the following best describes the term merchant discount rate sometimes seen in news so it was pretty famous back then uh, you know whenever the exam happened mdr used to come in the news quite a lot so merchant discount rate is the rate which is charged to a merchant right it is not a discount to the merchant but a charge on a merchant right it is charged on a merchant so as a processing fee 
for uh, you know uh, carrying out debit card or credit card transactions right so using his pos machine he does the debit card and credit card transactions so for this utility he has to pay some charges it is called as merchant discount rate so uh, why was it in use because npci is the one you know which actually provides this service as well and uh, because npci said that we are going to slash the mdr uh, so that merchants will be more inclined to use uh, the credit card and the debit card swipings at their outlets so npci said that you know we are going to slash this mdr so uh, where is the answer the incentive given by the bank to a merchant for accepting you know payments through debit cards pertaining to that bank so it is not an incentive per se it is a charge i told you right so the amount paid back by banks to their customers when they use no the charge to a merchant by a bank for accepting payments from his customers through the bank's debit cards see the incentive given by the government no it is not an incentive so answer is c it is pretty straightforward so this was an interesting question um, you know because this was in the drop you know backdrop of a committee called encasing committee for the review of fbm act that was constituted and it gave some recommendations so the question is based on the recommendations itself uh, so the first statement says that FRBM review committee report has recommended a debt to GDP ratio of 60%. Yes, that is absolutely fine. Uh, and uh, comprising 40% for central government and 20% for state government. So this is absolutely, uh, you know, right. The first statement. So the second statement. So with that, can you eliminate something? No, you can't eliminate anything. You can eliminate only B. Uh, Second statement says that the central government has domestic liabilities of 21% of GDP. Look at this. So here itself, you can get the answer uh, at least eliminate two comprising 40% of central government debt is what is being suggested. So central government has domestic liabilities of 21% at present. Look at this. It does not go well at all, right? Basically, this has to be 49%. That is for the central government, which has to be brought down to 40. This has to be 21%, which is supposed to be brought down to 20. Right? So it has been interchanged in this particular statement. So statement two is wrong. So the moment you remove statement two, right, from the equation, so you have one and three, right? You have to check the validity of three. As per the constitution of India, uh, it is mandatory for a state to take the central government's consent for raising any loan if the farmer owes uh, any outstanding liabilities to the latter. So if this is a case, you just have to remember the constitution, article 293, right? It empowers the state governments to borrow only from domestic sources, right? 490, uh, sorry, 293.1. So state governments can borrow only from where? Domestic sources. If they have to borrow, right if they have to borrow um, under article 293 section 3 right clause 3 it clearly states that if the state government has outstanding borrowings from the central government now it is required to obtain the central government's permission so it has to ask the central government's permit before borrowing that is a must under article 293 3 so is statement three right absolutely right so answer is c okay next the quantity this is also interesting you could have solved it even without actually uh, knowing the current affairs the quantity of imported edible oils is more than the domestic production of edible oils in the last five years so it is not just the last five years it's been you know so for a long time right so quantity of imported edible oils is more than the domestic production it is absolutely right so we tend to assume that it is a trend question right it is a trend related question it is not a trend related question it is a fact question right fact based question so the government does not impose any custom duties is it even possible no it is not possible it imposes custom duties on imported edible oil when i say imported edible oils there are many imported edible oils we have so 
you know we have soybean uh, oil and then we have palm oil we have you know rapeseed oil so on all of these the government imposes some or the other duty right custom duty is imposed so statement 2 is absolutely wrong so answer is one only okay answer is one only a next beam app allows the user to transfer the money to anyone with upi enabled bank account right is that right it is absolutely right so beam app what does it do uh, you know it uses the upi enabled bank account and uh, you know it powers the app powers in such a manner that it brings together all the bank accounts in one place just like your google pay phone pay so beam app also does the same thing but it is the one which is being provided by npci so all of them use the upi uh, you know uh, network itself uh, but coming to the second part while a chip pin debit card has four factors of authentication beam app has only two factors of authentication now both parts are wrong when we consider a you know a factors of authentication you have to know that there are three ways in which factors of authentication can be given uh, one is based on knowledge right the other one is based on possession and the third one is based on inherence so what does it mean knowledge as in what you know like a password or a pin possession is something like you know you have a smartphone a thing which you have that is essential smartphone or a card on the other hand you have the inherence what about this something you are already basically your fingerprint right uh, you know eye scan or voice recognition right so these can be used as factors of authentication okay so just think about debit card what all do you require in order to use a debit card to withdraw money basically you need a pin and what else do you need do you need something in possession yes you need the card in possession do you need something else nothing else that's all you require in order to withdraw the money so you have only two factors of authentication for a debit card beam app on the other hand in order to use this you need three factors of authentication you need the device id and the mobile number which is linked to the account this is one second you need a bank account as well which is linked to the beam app that is the second thing and thirdly in order to you know transact or you know send the money you need a pin so total you have three factors of authentication so statement two is wrong right so here it has to be two here it has to be three three factors of authentication so the answer is one only a next with reference to governance of public sector banking in india consider the following statements so you have the capital infusion basically recapitalization we can study that as recapitalization capital infusion or capitalization or recapitalization into public sector banks by the government of india has steadily increased in the last decade which means it has to be increasing like this continuously which is not possible given the fiscal space which is rather congested for the government it changes from year on year right year to year it keeps changing so you cannot expect this to be the case and also it is saying last decade whatever we see as a problem uh, as in the npa problem only when the government has the npa problem when the government and the rba sense the npa problem that's when the government thought of capital infusion into the uh, you know public sector banks so given this scenario uh, in the last decade it has not been an issue so capital infusion would not be seen in the last 10 years second to put the public sector banks in order merger of associate banks with the parent state bank of india has been affected so affected as in you know put into action right so whether that is the case yes 
that is one of the reasons right bank consolidation bank mergers were being done uh, in order to make sure that you know the banks which are not performing so well uh, come under the ambit of a well performing bank so the five associate banks uh, of state bank of india were merged with the parent state bank of india so that is the reason so statement 2 is absolutely right so answer is b so that's about it in this uh, particular video right thank you for watching have a nice day and uh, if you haven't subscribed already do subscribe thank you